Hi, we're Full Intention. And you're watching Loop TV. Okay, here for Loop TV, and we're getting very up close and personal here with John Pern and Michael Gray from Full Intention. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're good, thanks. Yeah, very good, very good. Now, you guys have been uh, an indomitable bar- partnership since the early 90s. You met in about 93. Tell me how you met. Uh, we met in a club. It was a couple of years before then, actually, showing our age now. Um, but, uh, yeah, Michael was DJing in a club. Uh, we got talking, and um, Michael realized that I played keyboards and things, and he just kind of suggested, well, why don't I bring in some equipment and have a jam over the top of the records, the records he was playing? So I started playing more groovy stuff and, <laughs> and kind of went from there, so John could improvise then I sort of said well I'm doing a bit of remixing for this company called DMC Disco Mix Club and I said to John I could do with someone who's better at keyboards than I am you know one fingered (laughs) and so John came in and uh, it kind of started going from there yeah, really. yeah we kind of started doing a lot, lot, lot more remixing because I know you were well into the mega mixing side of things yeah, at yeah. the time weren't you yeah. and, uh, um, everybody loves a mega mix oh I can't be a mega mix <laughs> <laughs> I had a number two with a mega mix with Jonathan King yeah yeah we won't go there right? <laughs> no I mean you started you started in your bedroom at 12 years old with probably a Fisher Price turntable and a Bon Tempe organ what, uh, what was it what was that first little bedroom setup? Yeah, it's actually my dad made it I wanted two turntables we found these two old turntables and uh, he made a box for it and an amp and we had this thing that could go from one deck to the other I mean, it's quite primitive but you know uh, oh, dad made your first mixer that well, is I was mad on records dad when I was, was six dad was a master yeah he's very good he's giving me his due so basically he started then um, organising an under 16s disco at our local church hall every other week which I'd done for the next two or three years it played havoc with my schoolwork, but that's I fantastic it. I love your dad I want your dad to be my oh, dad <laughs> yeah he was brilliant I owe a lot to him and the, th- the thing is that from every all the money we made from that we just put it into more and more equipment so by the end of it I had pyrotechnics and everything you know by the time I was about 15 16 <laughs> so that's fantastic it was, it was and you I mean you again probably helped by your parents classically yeah, trained yeah I, yeah I was classically trained um, started off mainly playing in bands really um, played in like a jazz funk band in the 80s uh, it was like a school thing that then went on to do the London club circuit and things um, but uh, yeah I kind of got into house music when I, when I first heard it I thought this is what I want to do. Oh, it was a slippery slope for many of us. <laughs> and from hearing that, um, yeah, just started working with Mike. Hadn't really done a lot of studio, uh, uh, you know, before then. And uh, yeah. you know, we kind so of pulled John out from the band. Yeah, you know, he like did. Yeah. Band, yeah. And, and, so and, you were stalking him, <laughs> <laughs> and then just kind, of, just kind of worked after that. Yeah. And we, we developed, well, it, you know, so. got on well and developed a little formula for, for working. And, and we've been doing it ever since. Really, yeah. You know? yeah. Tell me a bit about the studio setup you've got now. Um, we're both we'll, Mac, we'll both Mac based. Yeah. Uh, we both use Cubase. Uh, we yeah, we use Ableton for stuff as well for doing DJ mixing and for for our live sets as well. We use Ableton and Tractor and Tractor as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's based basically based around that. Um, I use Dynaudio monitors. You've got PMC. PMC, very nice. And um, um, Genelex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I basically had the people who done Matrix Studios in London. Uh, ah. I got them to do mine, so I got a li- little bit of slice of London mm. in, the in the country. Countryside, That's yeah. kind of the idea, really. So it's good. It's good. Um, and then yeah, just just racks of old equipment that we hardly ever use anymore. <laughs> they just sit there, really. Yeah, um, it's it's yeah. fun and it's quite pretty in retro now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I'm thinking of putting my desk into storage and replacing it with a sofa or something. I like. think you should. I think, yeah. <laughs> because uh, yeah. only using like three channels. I'm always telling you know. John to sell his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're an eBay fiend, aren't you? I can no, I've got it. into it a bit more, and uh, and I kind of think, oh, is that there's that cut-off point when? But it's like you say, there's some things. For example, like John's got the Korg M1 keyboard, uh, yeah. and like in the 90s, that was like a big thing. So many records mm-hmm. were made on that, and a lot of classic house records as well, yeah. especially the organ. Is it called organ? Yeah, two the or M1 something? organ. Yeah, Lou Saints hanging on the string was entirely on that, going back a few years. Yeah, there's it? a lot of uh, records yeah. like that. Um, no, don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. So I had to pull you up. Yeah, it was one of them anyway. <laughs> 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 no, but it's, it's true. And the thing is, you think if there's a resurgence in a certain sound, like a lot of people are taking bits from 90s records now, you've kind of got all the original we, stuff. We've right? spoken to producers who are sp- spending time buying your stuff on eBay. <laughs> they're, trawling. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they're trawling eBay and finding everything that you sell. And I'm sure there will be a resurgence of those sounds. It always comes back around again. I mean, mm. I, I, I look at my Moog every day and think, Shall I sell it? Shall I keep it? Oh no, you've but got to keep it. It, it looks fab. And the so, mini Moog, yeah. just And can I awesome add, it's also been kit. signed by Bob Moog, isn't it? <laughs> That's for the anoraks who's watching. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, in, in terms of sort of shameless self-promotion and stuff, how much do you actually get involved with your sort of online promotion and with sort of interaction with fans and people who send you stuff? Um, we all still do our own Twitter, Facebook and MySpace yeah, ourselves. Uh, yeah, so do, if you yeah, send yeah. us a message, you'll get one back. And, uh, you we know, don't Twitter eventually. everybody when we're having <laughs> breakfast and when we're having lunch and all that. We don't do that. There is some really unnecessary <laughs> Twittering Sad. going on. Yeah, I, 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 well, I won't go there, but you just I can't believe you've got that much time. Yeah. How can you actually make records? if you're able to put that much down in a day mm. I can't see it you know, we completely understand the importance of building up a big fan base on you know of yeah. obviously MySpace we, we really got into um, and uh, yeah it, it's so important you know you have a release you can let everybody know and, um, and do you I mean do you feel it works as a sort of functional tool in sort oh, of benchmarking yeah, what's happening really with important. you absolutely really important. Uh, you know you can tell which countries your stuff's being listened to by the number of visits you get yeah. I mean, it's really really important you know then you can try and get some more DJ gigs in those areas and yeah. you know everything ties in now and this is something we just didn't have ten years ago you know, it's quite yeah. a new thing so do you think sort of embracing the new emerging technology whether it be the CDJ 2000s or, wh or whether it be the new sort of synths and vocoders and everything that's coming out do you think that's a secret to your longevity as producers? I think we've always done DJ sets using, you know, before all this new equipment came out, we'd bring samplers and keyboards. Yeah. And, and I think we did get a lot of bookings because we were doing something different mm. at the time. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, when we started DJing together, I think one of our first gigs with Ministry of Sound, the main room, and we, you know, we'd have the vinyl going and also we'd have sampler, mm -hmm. keyboard, God, there was a lot of stuff yeah, we used to bring. Yeah. Is your dad on the bongos? <laughs> <laughs> no. But, but people would come up and they'd go, I don't, know, who, I don't know who's playing what, you know, and it was kind of like a little mystery. And it was, it yeah, was it was a bit. Yeah. Sort of, but it, it's, uh, so we've always tried to push it. I mean, yeah. sometimes we'd have done such small clubs that trying to get all the equipment in. Just wouldn't fit in the DJ yeah, place, would so We'd so be we hanging out, that. I'd be outside on the floor or something. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what we're doing now is kind yeah. of what we would have liked to have done then, yeah. but of course, but it's technology ten was times easier and, and to do it on a, on a laptop now with, with Ableton mm. and, and Tractor as well. Yeah. We've yeah. always embraced technology, you know, with, um, I know we've been in the game for quite a while, but we always has embraced technology. I mean, our sets now are purely digital, there's no CDs, yeah. it's Tractor and Ableton. Mm. And, we have uh, a laptop each and, and we both play yeah. continuously And we use controllers, and yeah. so. you know, we've, we've, yeah, we've done the whole thing right the way through because it's just so much quicker and you can do more. We can loop up records if it's going down well, you just loop it up for a bit longer yeah. and <laughs> the beats are good, you, you can, can be ten do anything. Times more creative. Um, yeah. Much it, well, it does allow you to be more creative on the fly than vinyl did back in the. I mean, you could scratch it. It was true. Oh, I missed the vinyl. Well, you can still vinyl scratch yeah. with a controller yeah, now. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Going back to vinyl, we, we did do a couple of gigs in the past where you'd have a connecting flight, and the records would never, never even get yeah, there. You know, had a few so, ones. Yeah. And, then, the uh, <laughs> and then yeah. obviously with CDs, you know, we'd still have to carry them on the plane because you didn't want to check them in. And uh, you know, now now we just have a bag full of heavy laptops, I suppose. Huh? Yeah, you're still carrying the same amount of stuff. Full of cables, yeah. though, so they it tends to always get opened. <laughs> Up, you know. Now let's talk about what you've come, got coming up both together and separately in the, in the next sort of three, four months. Anything exciting? Um, we've uh, kind of got back into remixing uh, yeah, again. We've, we've actually yeah. taken on a new manager just for remixing at the yeah. moment. So Matt Waterhouse is looking after us for that. And um, yeah, we've, sure. we've, we've, um, we've just remixed Stay by Hertz. Yeah. Um, Their new single is yeah. not out yet, but uh, Pete Tong played last yeah. Friday, which we was... Had it's always a bonus. Always a bonus. Pete Tong plays it. That's kind of that's good enough for us. So. Yeah, it's good. We had Pop Justice tune of the day as well last week, which, yeah, is, which we? is really good yeah. for a like you yeah. know the pop scene. Because when you it? haven't remixed mm. sort of quite a while and you go back and do it, it's it's always a bit daunting. Thinking, well, you know, you even for you guys. Uh, yeah, it's not that we're not worried that we're, you know, we're, we're happy to do it, but it's just how you want to keep kind of the old people that used to buy your records happy and also you want to appeal yeah. to a new crowd and try and get the balance right and, and also get back into that sort of mindset creatively maybe yeah yeah, yeah that is yeah, that definitely. Yeah. Yeah. so yeah so we're doing a, we're going to try and do a remix a month i think it's the plan at the moment yeah. um we're working on our, our label which we've got full intention records yeah, yeah, yeah let's let's talk a little bit about the label we, we know why artists set up labels how's, how's it going and and who have you sort of got on the roster 
It's, it's kind of all our us. stuff, really. It's just, just, <laughs> just to make it easy. Us, 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 us. <laughs> and even yeah. more of us. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to have an outlet for, for, for your music, definitely, without having to go through the whole record company thing. Yeah. And, and, and we're and just, stuff. yeah, we're just doing groovy underground stuff at the moment. We're not trying to do any sort of big, massive anthemic things at the moment. Mm. Guys, it's been such a pleasure to catch up with you. We're going to try and catch some of the gig a bit later. Yeah, and, yeah, I, and I hope we'll see you again. Right. Thanks a lot. This is Cat with Full Intention for Loot TV.